I don't think he has... Is this on now? <clears throat> so, yes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I have specially put on a tie, as it was remarked earlier on today, that <laughs> lecturers should wear ties, and I feel awful. <laughs> but, seeing that Mrs. Irvin is present, I'll make the effort. We're uh, going to talk about rumba. Competitive ideas for rumba. And um, <clears throat> those of you who are that interested in competition style dancing and visited Blackpool this year, vis witnessed in the professional Latin American competition something very interesting happening whereby pure syllabus style basic was danced by one of the couples and it was very successful. And since then there's been a lot of debate about whether one should dance basics or not, whether that is better than somebody doing variations. Do you know in the end I don't think it matters whether you do basic only or good construction of choreography which consists of basic because that is really what it should be consisting of because otherwise how can the dancing be good if it does not have ingredients in it to show good movements. I do not think that the solution is to go and open a theory book and then pick out variations 1 to 22 and put them together in an amalgamation and then think I will become the British champion become of this. Somebody said it's not, it ain't what you do, it's how you do it and that's exactly the thing. You see just by opening a book and copying what is written there it doesn't mean that it has to be good. You have to dance well and it's just the fact that to dance well you have to show the kind of movements that have quality in them. And quality means that there are things that you can use the knowledge that you obtain over a longer period of time and make it better and better and then show your control and understanding of dancing. Mm -hmm. four, three, four, one, rock and rock and Alamana, four, turn one, two, three, four. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Now, what I started by saying in this lecture today, um, I would think that I would think that if anybody could talk about trends appearing in dancing, I think it has become a thing that was very visual on the cards for the future that just the fact that more dancing more dancing I mean recognizable dancing good quality dancing would have to come back in so-called vogue because people can only go so far and make it interesting by doing either tricks or so-called very, very clever foreign influence in your dancing and still make it interesting to the public. You can only go on for so long. You know, after five years of seeing splits and five years of crawling on the floor, yes, people actually would like to see some, some might say sanity, some normality, I would just like to see elegance coming back into dancing, mm -hmm. developed clever elegance of dancing movements. And I think that you will see that the direction and the development of Latin American dancing will be going very much in exactly this direction. Um, you see, Latin American dancing, and for the benefit of you who have come here today because it is supposed to be a competition style day, 
Um, there has been a lot of changes, not only in dancing over the last couple of months, but there also this so-called talk about changes of clothing and appearance. Now, I heard somebody lecture in Blackpool who was a competitor himself and felt so sad that the months prior to this very important championship, when he was practicing in London and going in for his lessons, nobody seemed really very interested in whether his dancing was that much better. But more interested, he was going to put gel in his hair or have the new fashionable trousers with the pleats in the front. And of course, there has been such a change taking place where the sequined cat suits have gone away in fashion for the men. And in the beginning, there was such a lot of discussion about the impossibility of this ugly look. And at Blackpool this year, you saw some good ones and you saw a lot of very bad ones. Now, you know yourself anything which is a new idea, you're testing out. And if you could always find the ideal thing right away, Christ, the world would never live, would it? Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing which is very, very important in Latin American dancing is that you would like to make an image which the people of the world would look at this form of dancing and say, I would like to be in this. I would like to do this. And by changing the look, which also then means a look of elegance, and I then mean, and I mean the elegant touches of today's fashionable look. I would like to see that come into dancing combined with elegance of actual dancing movement. And I also would like to hope that if people feel that they can associate, I mean, why do you think this room has been changed the way it is? It's a very fashionable trend. It's a bit of the 1930s, it's got the white palms, it's got the check floor. What does that tell you? The whole fashion of the world at the moment is going in a direction. And it would be very stupid for the dance business to remain in the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. Now I think, and you know, anything which, I mean the main criticism about this so-called new look for the men was, oh, but the line around the feet, you know, the ankles, when the, th the, when the trousers flap, it's so ugly for your line. I've never seen a modern dancer with elastics under his shoes. Never ever. And it's not more than about 12 years ago when the first elasticated suit was worn. Now in those days, I don't think they stood still. They still danced. That whether it meant that you have been used to seeing a body clinging, stretched suit that lengthened the line of leg, fine. But why does that have to be with a Latin dancer only? Why does a modern dancer then suddenly get accepted? They do throw over sways. They use the ankles the same way. They walk. I would even say they do a lot more elevation than we do in use of the feet. They even move more around the floor sometimes. And I think that is a very bad excuse to use. That does not mean that if somebody has too short trousers that they look funny. But the modern dancer with two short trousers also looks funny. So everything in life, I think if it's done with the right taste, and we're all experimenting, but at least it is a pleasing image to the outside world. Somebody said to me when they heard that Liberace was dead in America, and he said, well, I do hope he has taken all the Latin cat suits with him in the grave. <laughs> now, we never thought that way but maybe the outside world did. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just trying to say that <clears throat> competitive dancing is such a very, very booming thing all over the world. And um, 
There's a lot of you in that business. Some of you only do it socially. Some of you do it more competitively. A good competitive image is only good for the social side, I think. Or not. I would just say it this way. Any form of good publicity for dancing is good publicity for you, whether you do it on a high level or on a low level. And to then probably think that <clears throat> what we can get, because it's also in the image of the structure of the world, the changing structure of the world, I think we've seen enough vulgarity on television in generally many aspects of the world that I think people would like to see elegance back in again. But it has to be combined, I think, with an elegance of the today's trend. Look at the young kids when they go for a party out. I don't think young kids of 17 has for many years used a tuxedo or a smoking so much as what they do today. Now I think that's great even if they got punk style hair. Right? Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your time. I hope you managed to get the basic actions in the little bits of dancing we did. Thank you for being an attentive audience. Thank you. Thank you.